Okay, so welcome. Uh, welcome to Venture Airsoft. This video is all, is a basically a live spray. Um, I know people have asked me a lot of questions regarding spraying and regarding what you do, how you do it. And I've seen loads of videos on about people doing it, but um, they always go through a, a laborious, long process of like spraying this, spraying that, and uh, showing bits and pieces before and after and that kind of stuff, which is great. But I just want to show you how quickly uh, it can be to spray your gun. Now, preparation is key. Um, so I'm spraying other things as well at the time, so I'm not, I want to spray these um, USB leads uh, when I use to charge and stuff up. I've got a new mount on there, new camera mount, so I, I want to spray them as well while they're being black. There's a couple of things, the reason I'll tell you why I've done these things. So the way I spray stuff, I spray stuff as and when I have them um, and how I want to use them. So first off, the gun itself then, hopefully you can see that there. Mask up the things you don't want spraying. So for me, I'm not going to move, remove this site. And if I do end up removing this site, putting it on another gun, uh, I want to put it back in the same place. So if I spray it with the site on and get the, the, the site sprayed the same as the gun, when I remove that, I'll have some black lines of where the site was. It'll always tell me where it's been and where it goes on to. And I, I don't mind. That's fine. Um, cover up the things on your site you want to keep covered up. So the uh, both lenses, uh, adjuster if you want to uh, cover that up. Hand grip, I want to leave open like that, I want to get that sprayed as well. Uh, magazine, you can, what you're supposed to do uh, really is to you know block up the magazine well so you don't get any spray in there, over spray, uh, to make magazines difficult getting in there. But also if, you, if you're getting a bit of spray in there and you're just masking a bit of the well up, then as you're putting the magazine in and out, that, that little bit of sort of really fine spray and mist that you get that dries in there um, can turn to a turn to a sort of corrosive material and go go inside all your workings you don't want that i just use an old mag that i don't use anymore fit the mag the mag prevents all the stuff going in there anyway which is great again same things for threaded stuff anything you don't want spraying up i could mask that up but i want to spray that as well the suppressor so the easiest thing to do is just to connect it all up together i have masked up inside the suppressor uh, i've unscrewed that put a bit of masking on there so i don't get anything in the barrel there don't get anything in the thread uh, any of the workings you can see on the other side there I've masked up masked up the adjuster and stuff uh, the hop adjuster and that I don't want any of those um, to get covered up uh, in, in crap so that's where I am now and everything else I want to get sprayed so it's not a problem I generally use move them around a bit so you can see that I generally use uh, a couple of uh, paint can lids uh, old lids to bring it off the floor a little bit so you don't get stick marks and stuff on the side there uh, it tends to dry pretty quick paints I generally use, I, do, I use Krylon, I've always used Krylon for stuff uh, and that's my, my go to paint although I do have as you can see here some no, uh, new Prol UFP which is actually quite good from their flat range also when I've done spraying it's leaking a bit there but I tend to put all the can heads uh, sorry the, the spray can uh, the spray heads in a, in a pot of um, usually um, nail polish remover and leave them in there and you can see the paint just falls off them and they don't get blocked up next time you can use them so give this a good shake what I'm going to do first is I'm going to give it an undercoat uh, and for the undercoat I like to use um, sand or khaki uh, sorry sand colour um, quite a matte sand um, undercoat that and then I use other stuff to give different effects now again the other thing you can use if you're using let me just go over here for a sec if you're going to spray something quite small, um, like this for example, move that around there so you can see. Um, I use a little spray box like this, which is an old like um, uh, shoe box. The little turntable inside. That way you can spray stuff, turn it, spray stuff, turn it, and it stays inside. You haven't got to go sort of outside getting bits of crap on it or anything like that. So that's quite a little tip there. Um, to cover to make the effects, then I use old Hessian bags. Uh, so this is a part of a towel bag, an issued towel bag, which is quite nice, quite a nice mesh feel to it. It's quite a fine mesh, and they also use quite a coarse mesh. So this is another towel bag. Uh, I've not used this one yet, but I've got, got a few of these. Normally you can pick them up from surplus stores for two or three quid. Again, that's quite a coarse mesh, which is quite, um, quite good. Again, you can just drape it over, do fine and coarse, and you'll see the difference between the two in a minute. So first off, I want to just give it a, a good coat. Let's get that right so we can see. 
I do that. Can you see? Again, this will be unedited, so you should be able to see everything as we go go through here. And the one thing people do with spraying is they tend to um, don't worry about the carpet on this one. This is a <laughs> it's just a rug that's down in my room, uh, sort of hobby room upstairs. So don't worry about that. Probably that you would anyway. But generally, I'm not too fussed about whole coverage. You have to be amazing. People try and make it a little bit too good, almost like you know, like a Picasso or anything like that. And they're trying to be too neat with it. Doesn't matter if you start it too much in some places, not enough in others. The whole point is it's there to break up the outline of the gun. So something that it's life this can. <laughs> now I'm not too fussed about the grip as well because I take that up, I have a bit of uh, fabric tape on there. And you'll see in a second just go through that camera mount a little bit better. So I'm just gonna give that literally a couple of seconds and you'll start to see it change colour. So whilst that's doing that I'm gonna the green up, the green's got quite a bit more in it so it should be okay with that. But even when that's slightly damp, I need to use that nozzle actually because uh, I lost one. You see even though that's slightly damp, you know, just chuck stuff on it. You tend to like hook it over a bit either side, so hook it round. So that's that's coarse and you start to get a pattern like that. Fine if you want to see what the fine looks like. You can see the fine. So coarse, fine, coarse, fine, yeah. And then now you know, they can see where that is. So next time you bring it across, just get the brown out. Wipe that off with a bit of rag. start to build build that up it doesn't have to be amazing there you go start to build it up nicely and there you go I don't know if you can see that very clearly All you can do is when you when you can see areas that you you want to uh, sort of highlight a little bit more or you know just extend that you can put the final piece on and you can do that again you want to put a bit more green on somewhere you can do that no problem Again, likewise, I want to go up the top here. Easy. 
Now, as soon as that dries a little bit there, depends what you want to do. Some people like to put leaves and stuff on there. I'm not a huge fan of leaves. Um, if you're in a non-leafy environment, then you're not going to get the true benefits of that. Personally, I find um, probably some cases a little bit too much um, green. Um, if you're in like a built-up area and stuff, you're going to see it quite quite evidently. But um, you can make it a bit more subtle. There you go. Then you'll see a lot of these things are touch, touch dry almost now, so I can flip that round quite easily. Then do the other side. So let's change, change tact a little bit. Now it doesn't matter if you've, uh, you think, oh, I've already sprayed the other side a little bit. I'm going to ruin that, but you're not because you're not sprayed it enough. Um, with coats and stuff to make too much of an issue. Yeah. There you go. Right, so now we can go on this side. That was really quick there. Don't need to be. Can then move that ever so slightly, just so the pattern changes ever so slightly. There you go, first couple of coats there. Again, I'm going, to, I'm going to go a bit more in it. Sometimes you get this quite nice effect where you've, where you've dragged it slightly, almost look like a bit of a leaf anyway. You haven't got to be too um, strict with it. So now I'm just going to infill some of the other sections there so you can see. Like that. That gives you a rough idea of what uh, what I'm going with. Then again, you can see up top as well. You know, probably some areas I can go go across there. So now I can see the areas that I need to go. I can just put the little thin piece on. Like so. Like that. One bit more green in a few areas. A bit of green down here won't go miss. Like so, don't worry about the handguard, not really fussed about that. There you go, and that's it. I mean, that took us, I don't know what, uh, what we're now 13 minutes um, to get pretty much, uh, pretty much there or thereabouts. That'll be touched dry in literally a few minutes, so whilst that's doing that, I can give these good going over again they don't need to be too from where they're going to be that make too much of an issue smash it there we go so yeah people take you know hours and days uh, with leaves and patterns and stuff if you just want something to break up the uh, the general shape of the weapon crack on there you go that's as easy as you're going to get um hope that's been enjoyable for you and you can see the, the pros and cons of it have a go yourself worst case if you fuck it all up and you make a mess of it you can just literally spray it go back to get a black go back to matte black go back to matte brown go back to whatever matte color you want and then try again as this wears because i'm not putting i purposely don't put a huge amount of uh paint on you know on the areas that are going to be on the belt and stuff or they're going to be on the clip and that kind of stuff they're going to wear they're going to get nice little wear marks on 
and they'll look they'll age quite well quite easily so a few little top tips then to help you spray your gun uh, this is not exhaustive but just a few little things to take away the first one is masking off uh, make sure you mask off your gun all the areas you don't want to spray sights uh, electronic triggers that kind of stuff or insignia on the side of the gun use old mag uh, and old mags to cover the mag well you don't want any kind of overspray going inside there so you can mask it off or you can just put a mag in uh, prevents all the uh, stuff going in there use coarse and fine mesh again towel bags high vis vest anything's got like a mesh there you can use all of that stuff uh, move it around you get a similar sort of pattern use two three different colors depending what you want and where you where you're going uh, that works best and apply a base coat all over first somewhere that you can start building that layers up uh, and don't worry about it being neat it doesn't have to be neat it's not picasso it's there to break up the silhouette and the outline of the gun just uh, just take it easy you can always do it again hopefully it's been enjoyable for you uh, please give us a uh, like and subscribe hit the little bell icon for future content and uh, hopefully you can uh, share your uh, say your thoughts with us uh, on the channel so take care bye bye